This is Trading Techniques Lecture number 543. The purpose of this tape will be to expand upon the introduction to the new barometer and OP indexes that was contained in the recently printed booklet, How to Select a Stock. There are two primary areas on which the discussion will focus. The first are the reasons behind the new indexes. The second area, and the one which should consume a majority of the tape, will cover ways of integrating the new developments into regular market operations. First, let's review just exactly what the new developments are so that those who do not have a copy of how to select a stock can know what we are talking about. The new indexes cover all time frames of market operations. For the long-term investor, there is a weekly version of the technometer, force, and momentum indexes. For the short and intermediate-term trader, although they can be used by the long-term investor as well, there are OP indexes and technometer and force indexes for the eight stocks that make up the Wyckoff wave. Why is there a need for more long-term indexes? One answer to this question might be that there is no need since no one trades for the long term anymore. That, of course, is an exaggeration. There are still many, many individuals who, for one reason or another, and not always a good reason, trade exclusively for the long term. However, it cannot be denied that shorter term trading has been getting more attention from more people in recent years, probably because of the growth of option trading and the continued and apparently increasing volatility of the market. It is this volatility that provides the best reason for developing new tools to help those who would prefer or should prefer to restrict themselves to a longer term type of operation. The most important periods for any investor or trader are those of market turns. If the market is especially volatile, there are obviously going to be more turns most of these, however, are going to be of relatively little importance for a long-term standpoint. The long-term investor who jumps every time there is an indication of a turn will quickly defeat himself. He needs a way of determining which indicated turns are the ones that should be of greatest interest to him. This is the purpose of the weekly technometer, force, and momentum indexes used in combination with the weekly chart of the Wyckoff wave and OP. The need for additional indexes for individual stocks should be more apparent. Determining the trend and position of the general market is the most important thing for any trader to do, but it will not produce one penny of profit unless correct conclusions here can be converted into an equally correct stock selection. The buying and selling tests play an extremely important part in this, but they are often not enough. Many times a student will be able to point to action that represents the passing of all nine tests, will take his position based on this, and then have absolutely nothing happen. One explanation for this is that in his uncontrollable desire to be doing something, he has incorrectly concluded that one or more of the tests have been passed when, in fact, it or they really have not. Only experience and self-discipline can truly solve the problem of this uncontrollable desire, but an additional set of checks and balances provided by an OP index and technometer and force indexes for the individual stock could help prevent some trades that really should not be made. To see how this can be the case, considering the following general market example. We begin by determining the trend of the market. This tells us what positions or types of current action represent trading opportunities. Let's assume that we find the market to be in one of those positions. Does this mean that we have a green light to act? Assuming we have not made any mistakes, the answer would be yes. But how do we know if we have made any mistakes? An obvious step is to review the analysis that resulted in the decision to act. If a glaring error has been made, such a review should reveal it. However, if the error is more subtle, or a combination of subtle mistakes, it or they may go unnoticed until a resulting trade starts to go bad. 
To help avoid this, we turn to the trend barometer for confirmation. Let's say the market is positioned at the bottom of a trading range in what clearly looks to be a spring condition. There is a good reason for excitement. We look to the trend barometer and find the technometer to be oversold and the force and momentum both beginning to move up with the force index beginning its move from only a moderately negative level. This confirms the flashing green light turned on by the spring position and tells us to find a stock to trade. What if we had the same trend and position but a different set of barometer readings? Let's assume that the technometer is in a neutral position in the mid 40s and that the force and momentum are continuing to move down. This combination does not confirm the indication given by the spring. Therefore, there is reason to wonder whether the market will respond and, if it does, how well it will respond. To put it another way, there is a significant doubt which should tell us to do nothing. Now, Let's continue our hypothetical example by saying that the barometer has confirmed the indication of the spring position and we are beginning to look at individual stocks. We find two that are in harmony with the market and also in a spring position. Should they both be bought? Well, maybe, but how can we be more certain? The answer is to turn to the OP, technometer, and force for the individual stocks. One of the two stocks is in divergence with its OP, has an oversold reading on its technometer, and its force index is moving upward. The second stock is not in divergence or oversold and does not have an upward moving force. Which of these two stocks would you prefer buying, assuming that both had the same amount of potential? The answer should be the first one. The only way this could have been known in this instance was through the use of the barometer and OP indexes for the individual stocks. Therein lies the desirability of having these kinds of in indexes. The next step is to determine how these new tools can and should be integrated into regular market operations and, at the same time, what pitfalls should be avoided if possible. We will consider the pitfalls first. The new developments that we have been talking about here are designed to make market operations more scientific and less subject to impatience and emotion. It is not a pure science, however, and probably never will be. Even with these additional tools, successful market operation is still very much an art. And the only way one ever masters an artistic endeavor is through practice. When something is said to be scientific, or to have been made more scientific, there is a tendency to equate that with the word mechanical. To do that when it comes to a market invites disaster. Mechanical approaches to technical analysis date back a long way. None of them have ever gained much of a following or been proven to be especially accurate. There can be no substitute for the development of good judgment. Therefore, Every effort should be made to avoid using certain index level and or relationships as automatic triggers to action. If these worked at all, this fact would have become known through the general market indexes a long time ago, and the need for new tools would not exist. When we speak of levels and relationships that should not be used mechanically, there are two that especially come to mind. The first is the overbought and oversold readings of the technometer, 50 and 38 respectively, that are taken to indicate a substantial vulnerability to reaction or rally. They do indicate this, but so do readings above 50 and below 38. A judgment based on an assessment of the overall picture must be the guide to determining when a stock has become so overextended in one direction or the other that a turn becomes extremely likely and not based on a particular number. In the case of the general mark, it will always be possible to find a stock that is ready to be traded when a technometer reading of 38 or 50 is recorded, providing enough issues are examined. However, when dealing with the technometer of an individual stock, 
If it is not ready to make its turn the moment an overbought or oversold reading is recorded, there is no way that a quick profit is going to result acting immediately. The other relationship that must be approached cautiously and not mechanically is the divergence. There are several reasons for this. The most obvious is that some divergences work themselves out without producing the normally expected turn in the price. Obviously, rushing in to take action on one of these cases will result in a painful experience. Because the trader will likely find himself on the wrong side of a stock in the midst of a substantial move. Another reason to be careful with divergences has to do with just exactly what they do and do not tell us. They do tell us that something is about to happen. They also tell us what the direction of that something should be. What they do not tell us, however, is how much of a move to expect. For this reason, we should not jump at the first sign of divergence. What is being indicated may be of little consequence and worthy of no action. This determination must come from other factors. When a divergence develops in the general market, we can usually justify a conclusion as to the magnitude of the anticipated response based on the magnitude of the divergence. Minor divergences should produce minor responses. Intermediate divergences tend to bring intermediate results and long-term divergences should produce very important responses. With all this being true, it should be possible to find a stock worth trading if careful consideration is given to such things as the count and relative strength and weakness and providing enough issues are considered. When dealing with the OP of an individual stock, the trader does not have the option of being able to search for a vehicle with which to participate in the indicated move. He must use that stock or one of its options. For this reason, there is need for extra care. Acting too quickly could result in a very poor position. Although being aware of the potential pitfalls that will confront someone who uses the new individual stock indexes should help to avoid them. However, total avoidance is unlikely. The active trader is likely to be especially vulnerable. When a mistake is made, there is only one way to keep it from becoming extremely costly, and that is to cut the loss short. A situation that does not develop as it should is probably not going to get any better and likely will get much worse. Now that we have considered some of the ways not to use the new indexes, let's begin a careful examination of how they should be used. We will start by taking a closer look at the weekly chart with the new weekly barometer indexes and we will concentrate on the action around and after point two. Four weeks prior to the bottom of the decline indicated by point two, the market started to tell us that at least that phase of the decline was beginning to get itself into trouble. It did this by making a small penetration of the oversold line of the downtrend. In the week that followed, the oversold condition first became more severe before giving way to a corrective rally that took the wave back into the trend channel. During the next week, the oversold condition was renewed and became more severe as the wave dropped further below the oversold line. This time there was no positive response and the wave ended the week in an oversold condition. The same was true of the week just prior to the climax action. There appears to have been a brief attempt at a corrective rally that failed. The wave ended the week near its most oversold condition of the decline. The next week brought the selling climax and finally the type of corrective rally at which the earlier oversold conditions had been hinting. The oversold positions established during any one of the four weeks leading up to the selling climax might have been taken as an indication to switch to the long side or at least take a neutral position in anticipation of a potentially sharp rally to correct the oversold condition. Those who chose to change to the long side were clearly in error. They had reason to be looking for a rally, but 
remember that the trend was still down and no action had yet occurred that would suggest a stopping of that trend. Those who switched sides during any of these weeks were yielding to impatience and emotion and likely paid a high price for it. An investor who elected to move to the sidelines during one of these four weeks probably did not do himself any harm, but there is some question as to how much good was accomplished by the action. It is true that moving out of a short position prior to the bottom of the move provided protection against being caught in a significant corrective rally. However, it is also true that some of the best declines come just prior to a selling climax. Therefore, shifting into neutral too early can result in missing a substantial portion of the potential. How can we tell when the time is right to make the switch and when is it too early? If it is too late, that fact will be quite obvious. The best way to avoid being too early is to demand more than one indication before taking any action. Those who acted on the indication of an oversold condition were using that as a sole basis of their action, which greatly increases the risk of making a mistake. The use of a long-term figure chart, such as the 25-point or 50-point, could have been of some assistance. The 50-point chart had a clearly defined objective of 2100 to 2150. This was confirmed by the first phase of a count on the 25-point chart at the 2675 level. The first two times the wave became oversold, it was 100 points and more above its indicated objective. At the third week, it was still 50 points above the objective range. It was not until the fourth week that the price entered the range. By waiting for this to happen and combining it with the existence of an oversold position, it would have been possible to avoid switching to neutral until just prior to the turn. There is another side to the use of the figure chart that is worthy of some consideration because it has some validity. Experience tells us, as well as the count guide, that figure chart objectives should be taken only as points to stop, look, and listen. In other words, they are not precise indicators, and the more long-term the chart, the less precise the indication tends to be. That being true, it could be argued that waiting for the objective range to be reached involved almost as much risk as acting solely on the establishing of an oversold position. If we accept this argument, and there is good reason to do so, we can see why someone might not have waited until just before the climax. However, running for cover on the first oversold condition 130 points above the top of the objective range seems to be going a bit too far. On the second week, when the oversold condition became more severe and the wave had closed to within 90 points of the objective, the incentive to take protective action should have increased. By the third week, with the oversold condition still more severe and the wave only 50 points from the objective, the urge to run for cover probably would have become very strong. Many probably did seek the protect protection of a neutral position at this point. Even though this was about 100 points above the eventual low, it was substantially lower than where action might have been taken, and this should have resulted in more profit, and action may be warranted. Here again, however, there is a question of preciseness. Divergent conditions may be in effect for some time prior to the beginning of the expected response. This allows extra time for additional price movement to occur, which could be harmful to a position taken immediately upon the development of a divergence. Although the enclosed chart does not indicate a divergence, it is only because there is not enough action shown. If the chart went back to include the previous important low, we would find that a divergence did exist as point two was approached. Even though it is not an exact indication, when combined with the others, it does add to the case for an important change. 
The likelihood of a meaningful shift in the market's action is enhanced when the weekly technometer is brought into the picture. It is the job of this index to indicate a vulnerability to either a rally or a reaction. This is exactly what it did at the end of the two weeks just prior to the week of the climax. Both these weeks ended with the technometer below 38, which suggested that the market had become clearly oversold and very vulnerable to a rally. The indications prior to this one had been saying, take cover. And now we can see that the technometer was, cons was confirming that indication. The only thing that could have made this confirmation more certain would be if the weekly force and momentum had turned upwards. Since they had not, some may have been inclined to hold short position, waiting for a more definite confirmation. The amount of damage that would have been done by waiting, which would have meant waiting one week too long, would have depended upon the character of the stock in which the short position had been held. To see what difference the particular stock might have made, we will look at two examples. Prior to beginning its decline last summer, International Minerals built a down count at the 45 level, indicating an objective of 32 to 33. The two Fridays on which the weekly technometer gave an oversold reading have been marked with an arrow. Notice that at the first one, IGL was still two to three points above its objective and not in an oversold position. Therefore, a decision to hold could have been easily justified. At the end of the second week, the one that ended on September 25th, the situation had changed considerably. In particular, it should be noted that the downside objective range had been reached and an oversold position had been established. At this point, the justification for continuing to hold a short position in this stock had been greatly re reduced. In view of the oversold condition that existed in the general market at this point, and considering the substantial profit that had been built up, a decision to shift to a neutral position on this stock would have made sense. Now, let's assume for a moment that we did not take heed of the indications that existed on September 25th and continue to hold our short position. The result would have been that some of our profit would have been given back in the rally that followed the selling climax. However, since we had a position in a relatively weak stock, the damage done by the rally was not especially severe. If we had been able to control our emotions and had waited until the next reaction to close out the position, our profit would have almost equaled the maximum that had been possible earlier. Next, we will consider the chart of Johnson & Johnson for the same period. It shows a much different picture. When this stock completed the week, indicated by the first arrow, it had just penetrated the supply line of its downtrend. This is clearly a much more positive picture than that being shown by the first stock. Would we have acted on the indication of the oversold weekly technometer? Perhaps, and such action could have been justified, but perhaps we would have chosen not to act. On September 18th, the date of the first arrow, the stock appears to be on the verge of re-entering the downtrend channel. Since the volume is still relatively high, there is reason for believing that the trend channel will be re-entered, and once that happens, the price could decline all the way back to the oversold line. Given this possibility, a decision to continue holding a short position would have had some merit. This would have changed, however, by the end of the next week. Instead of re-entering the trend channel during the week that ended on September 25th, Johnson & Johnson continued to work on its breaking of the downtrend. By the end of the week, the price was clearly outside of the trend channel and appears to have completed a lower volume test of the former supply line. How should we have treated the indication of an oversold market in this case? Deciding to continue holding a short position would have been a mistake. There was no reason to justify it. The stock had reached its downside objective and built a cause for its next move. It had broken the previously defined downtrend 
and was stronger than the market. The only thing that could have kept us on the short side of this stock would have been greed, and, as we can see from what has happened since then, a considerable price could have been paid if greed had been in control. Now, let's consider the situation that existed at this time from the other side of the market. We will assume that we are one of those investors who absolutely refuses to sell short and that we have been in a neutral position for several months. We see the weekly technometer become oversold on September 18th. We are aware of the oversold positions that are being established on the downtrend. We see the long-term divergence develop and realize that an important objective is near to being fulfilled. Should we buy? The answer here has to depend on the type of trader we are and the stock we selected. The factors already mentioned all point to a turn in a positive direction. If they represented the whole story, there would be no question that buying would be in order. The problem is they do not represent the whole story. We have not taken into account the fact that the force and momentum have not as yet turned up which is something we usually like to see before entering the market on the long side. We also cannot say with any certainty that any of the buying tests have been passed. All we know is that the market appears to be nearing the end of its decline. With these factors tending to offset the positive ones mentioned earlier, it should be apparent that a decision to step in and buy anything would have been foolish at best without those buying tests having been passed. A decision not to buy anything would have been wiser. Still, it would be nice to get in on the ground floor if the market is about to make an important turn. The question is how to do it without being exposed to too much risk. One way is to take another look at those stocks in which it had been determined that short positions could no longer be justified. Johnson & Johnson would be a good example all the reasons given for getting out a short position and shifting to neutral could be used as reasons to go long. The fulfilled downside objective, the new count, the broken downtrend, and being stronger than the market are all important ingredients in passing of buying tests. If a long position had been taken in this stock between September 18th and the 25th, it would have produced about a 20% profit at this point. And with a new trading range having taken shape, there is at least the possibility of additional gains. Trying to find a stock in which to take a long position this early can be difficult as well as risky. The reason is that only a very small number of issues will be ready to be bought. Finding them can be very time-consuming if stocks are considered strictly on an individual basis. A way of saving some of this time, which could mean the difference between taking advantage of an opportunity and missing it, would be to turn to the group indexes first. If there is early strength being expressed in a particular section of the market, it should be revealed by the group indexes. This type of examination would have pointed out two promising areas. They were the banking stocks and the insurance stocks. As of September 18th, both groups were still in their downtrend channels, but there were indications that the banking issues were shifting into a trading range, which actually made them relatively strong when compared to the general market. By September 25th, both groups had pointed themselves out as being relatively stronger than the market. They accomplished this by making penetrations of an important supply line in preparation for actually breaking the downtrend. In order for these two groups to take on the pictures that they did, each had to contain at least one or perhaps two issues that were looking quite positive. If not this, then all the stocks in the groups had to be exhibiting the same moderate level of strength. First possibility is the most likely, and a relatively quick investigation of the ten stocks in the two groups should have revealed the best candidates. If funds, or time, or both, happened to be limited, a decision to stick to only one of the groups might have been made. If so, selecting the insurance group would have been the wiser choice. The reason for this is that 
it had a greater potential for an in immediate move. The banking group had a greater potential if several phases were taken at once. However, it is always best to begin with the most conservative count first. Returning to the weekly chart of the wave, we find that immediately following point two and September 25th, the oversold condition of the downtrend and the weekly technometer re were removed as the automatic rally got underway. It was at this point that the weekly force and momentum finally turned upward, providing the confirmation that had been missing when the technometer was oversold. Unfortunately, the market was already into a good rally, so those who had elected to wait for a better indication on September 18th or 25th would have had to wait somewhat longer. Those who had not taken action early had no further reason for concern until the end of the first week in November, which would have been November 6th. The reason for concern can be found in the level to which the weekly technometer had risen by that time. At 47.5, it was indicating a relatively overbought condition, but not a clearly overbought one. What does that tell us? It says that the market had become vulnerable to a reaction, but probably not to an important turnaround. Therefore, we would likely not be looking to change sides in the market, but would be well advised to take a good look at current positions to see how they might do in a reaction. If we look back at Johnson & Johnson, we find that it had been as high as 37 by the 6th of November. This is significant because it means that the stock had reached its upside objective. Should it have been sold? This has to depend on the trader. One who is shorter term oriented, seeing his profit at this point might have chosen to take it rather than risk it. This could be justified. A longer term investor who could benefit from holding his position for a longer period of time might see the relative strength in the stock and elect to continue holding in anticipation of an area of reaccumulation developing. This approach could also be justified. The same type of reasoning could be applied to the insurance group. By November 6th, it also had a good profit, which could have either been taken or protected and held. After point four, the market backed off briefly and then began to run at the top of the trading range. It can be seen that this time the technometer did not become any more overbought than it had been previously even though the wave had moved to a substantially, substantially higher level. This has to be seen as a positive development. An overbought indication at this point that the wave trying to break the top out of its trading range would have been quite negative. Since it did not happen, there is less of a reason to be concerned about the failure to break out from a long-term standpoint than there would be otherwise. This should not be taken to mean that the failure to break out could be ignored by everyone. Remember, the indications we are getting from this chart are primarily intended to aid the intermediate to longer term investor. The short term trader should always become concerned when the market is stopped by an important support or supply line. He must be careful not to fall into the trap of using long term indications to be the sole basis for his short term trades. As we come to the end of the chart, we find a market in a reaction on decreasing volume. It appears to be in a neutral position, with only a moderate level of downward pressure being applied. In addition, there is still a substantial amount of upside interest present. How might the longer term investor react to this situation? The answer would depend on whether long positions were already held or still being anticipated. If positions were already being held, there does not appear to be any reason to do otherwise. This assumes that the positions are being held in stock that have shown themselves to be stronger than, or at least as strong as, the market. Stocks that had failed to move up are another matter. They should have been sold during a market rally. If they had not, they are likely experiencing the full effect of the market's current reaction. If long positions were not held as of the end of the chart, it would be inadvisable to take any immediate action. 
It is true that the market is in a reaction on decreasing volume. It is also true that the momentum is showing good interest in the upside without a substantial amount of downside pressure. This combination should be positive for the market. The problem is that the technometer is in a very neutral position. Since the last clear indication was one of being oversold at point two, and since the market has not yet become clearly overbought, it is possible that additional opportunities to buy could develop on reactions of which the move in progress at the end of the chart may be one. However, it would be best to wait for the technometer to at least make a slight move toward the oversold area before actually doing any buying. Where it is, as of the final posting, leaves too much room for additional decline. At this point, we have considered about a third of the material that needs to be covered to provide a reasonably thorough understanding of these new tools. Of course, no amount of lecture material will ever take the place of some careful practice trading. Next time, we will continue by taking a detailed look at how the new indexes for the eight wave stocks work and how all the information, both for the general markets and the individual stocks, can be integrated.